And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. How's everyone doing? We're going to take a look at the WTA Elite Trophy. We'll break down the draw in the first round matchup scheduled for today. Before we go any further, everyone like the video. Show some love to the channel, guys. We're back. Barbora Kachikova is the number one seed here, the Czech Republican. Listen, guys, she is a seven-time champion, Grand Slam champion. That's right. She won the Roland Garros uh, a couple of years ago. And listen, she's a two-time champion this year. She actually made several finals. We saw her first win Dubai against Iga Sviantek, straight set 6-4, 6-2. Great draw in Dubai that she had to come through and win. She did make the final in Birmingham against Asapenko. But she lost that. That's right, guys. She lost that in straight sets. First set went to a tie break. And she won San Diego, uh, where she took out Sophia Big Game Kennan. And uh, she didn't make Zheng Zhao final, where she lost to Ken Wenjong. So Barbora's in great form, guys. Look, she's 32-18 and 18 on the year. Like I said, she's won a couple championships. Her favorite surface, what a lot of people don't realize, is actually clay. Um... She's got more than half of her career wins coming on the clay surface. But she's the top seed here now. Of course, this tournament's by invitation only. We've had, you know, several players that chose not to attend. Uh, but what they like to do here is they always like to invite at least a couple Chinese players uh, for each draw. And make it fun for the home crowd. Uh, now, Barbour is ranked number 10 on the tour. And look, like I said, 32 and 18 on the year. And she's averaging just under two aces per match. She wins about 74% of her service games. She gets 69% of her first serves in play. Wins about 38% of her return games. Uh, she makes a lot of double faults uh, at the worst possible times. Just under three double faults per match. Uh, but when she has the opportunity to break opponents, she breaks them at about 57%. And she saves about uh, kind of... Kind of around 50% of her own break points. Now, Barbara Kachikova is a good serve and volley player. Um, she's got a good mid-range game. I think her angles are underrated. She can come cross-court and hit winners when she needs to. I don't think she's the most athletic player, but she does make that up by her shot. She makes that up with her shot-making ability. Uh, Barbara is very solid, and um, she's being the number one seed, one of the favorites to win this tournament. So watch out for Barbora. Up next is Madison Keys, the number two seed. Madison Keys is 28 years old now, and she's one of the older players in the tournament, even though 28 is still pretty young. Now, Madison Keys, she's the world's rank 11th. We've seen her as high as number seven on the world tour. She spent nearly a decade inside the top 10. But look, 33 and 13 on the year. She started the year off great with the USA winning the United Cup, right? Where we saw her take out Buskova, Jul Niemeyer, Katie Swan, Magdalene Nett, Lucia Bronzetti. And then look, she made the quarterfinals in Dubai and Charleston. The big title was the 500 in Eastbourne on grass, where Madison Keys won that previously in the past. She took out Dasha Kina. She beat Coco Golf, Petra Martic. She plays well on grass. She even made the quarterfinal at Wimbledon where uh, Sabalenka took her out. She made another quarterfinal in Washington and she made the semifinal at the U.S. Open where Sabalenka took her out again after being down a set. That's right, guys. Sabalenka came back. Now, she did play Mexico recently where she would bounce out in the second round, her first match after having a first round bye. But Madison Keys is a seven time champion, 33 and 13 on the year. She might be one of the stronger players here when it comes to the forehand. Of course, we have Asapenko here as well. But listen, guys, Madison Keys, she's solid. Again, in terms of serve, she might be the best server in this tournament. She can put a lot of pressure on opponents. She wins about 76% of her service games, 40% of her return games, which is a solid number. She's very powerful returning. She could put a lot of pressure on opponents returning, especially when her range, when she finds her range, Madison Keys is a problem. She wins about 68% of her first serves. Uh, look, she's averaging which is a little it's a little it, it's shocking but you know her aces aren't really there she's averaging not quite four aces per match 
she's reduced her double fault, which is good to see. Uh, she's under two double faults a match, but at any given time, those can rear their ugly head. Now, she saves about 62% of her break points, and when she has a chance to pressure her opponents, she only converts about 46% of her break points on opponents. I think that number needs to be higher. But Madison Keys is someone you have to look out for again. Her power can disrupt any of these players in this draw. Don't take Madison Keys lightly. The number three seed, Yelena Asapango, she's 26 years old. A lot of people forget she won her first slam at a very young age, uh, 2017, where she was, uh, what, I want to say just uh, right before turning 20 years old. So uh, she's solid, guys. She's got a lot of power. We all know that backhand is just, it rushes opponents puts him under tremendous pressure as well as the forehand. She's looking to hit winners and really two to three shots. And that's scary. That's dangerous. 36 and 21 on the year, having a solid year. Look, she started off at the Australian Open, making it to the quarterfinals, taking out Coco, right? That was a huge win. Rebecca did take her out. Got it. Hit a little bit of a, a rough stretch, you know, between the Sunshine Double and the Dubai leg of the tour. Didn't really do much, but Rome, she made the semifinal for back and it took her out again. But she did take out Bedosa, Krachikova, Kasakina, Serana Kirstea. Now, she made the final in Birmingham where we saw her defeat Barbara Krachikova, quarterfinal in East Burn. And Yelena plays well on clay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, well, yeah, clay and grass, right? She plays well on clay and grass, but U.S. Open quarterfinal before Coco just destroyed her. She'd make the quarterfinal in Beijing. And here she is, guys, the world rank number 13. She's been as high as number five after winning the uh, French Open six years ago. But listen, this opponent in the electron games gets 68% of her first serves in play. She saves about 55% of her break points. When she has opponents pressured, she converts at about 48%. We all know what she wants to do, right? I say it all the time. If you're going to beat Yelena Asapenko, you got to take her deep, right? Because if it's a short match, chances are she's going to win unless it's Coco at the U.S. Open. That 20-minute first set was insane. Yelena, I don't think will win this tournament. Uh, I mean, with all these great players here, I, I'm not picking her to win, even though she is a number three seed. I think she can, she might be able to do something. It's possible she can get out of this draw here and make it to the semifinal. But I don't see her winning this tournament. I just think her inconsistencies and just a lot of things that she does that are unconventional. And she's playing more solid players, especially higher ranked players. I just think they can find ways to beat her. But. Is she a threat? She's a threat anytime she gets on the court with her power. Uh, by far, she's got the strongest backhand in this tournament. The forehand, I mean, I think Madison Keys has a very powerful forehand as well. And even Donna Vekic when we're talking about the backhand. But I think Madison over Yelena has the ability to stretch the forehand cross court. Whereas... Yelena's just going down the line. It's that simple. If you make her come cross court, that's where she starts to make the mistakes because she really wants to rush rush it and speed you up. So therefore, I just I don't I don't see Yelena winning this tournament. But is she a threat? She is. And the fourth seed, Ludmilla Samsonova. Now, in case you're not familiar, each of these four seeds, uh, they are the top seed in their own individual draw. That's right. We'll get to the individual draws later, but for now, we're going to focus on the top four seeds and the players in general. But again, the top four seeds are the top seed in their own individual draw. Now, Ludmilla, guys, listen, she's 24 years old. She's got a birthday coming up. Barely in her mid 20s next year. Watch out for her, guys. Uh, I, we thought she was going to come into this season and really do damage as she ended last year playing great. And she started things off good. Abu Dhabi made it to the final where she lost to Belinda Benjik, uh, went three sets. Then she got a little quiet until grass season. Her toes and Bosch, guys, she really turned it on, made the quarterfinal where she lost to Sasnovich. That was unlikely, right? Bad Humberg made the quarterfinal where she lost to Senyakova. 
Another loss, unlikely, made the semifinals in Washington where Coco destroyed her. Montreal, she made the final, playing two matches in one day. That was tough. Pegula beat her there. U.S. Open third round exit, but she did make Beijing where Iga beat her straight sets, 6-2, 6-2. That was pretty bad. But Ludmilla, guys, 33-23 and 23 on the year. It's uh I say it's a good season considering how she started, right? The world's ranked 15th. We've seen her as high as 12. Now, Ludmilla, she is quietly putting up a lot of aces, right? Quietly averaging just under six aces per match. She's solid. She wins about 75% of her service games, 71% of her first serves in play, wins about 32% of her return games, which is a bit low for top 20 players. She saves about 58% of her break points when she has opponents pressured. She converts them at 45%. Ludmilla is getting really good with the drop shot. Um, the only thing that scares me about Ludmilla is it seems like the longer the match goes, she starts to run out of a little bit of gas. She, she's injury prone. You never know how healthy she is. I think she gets inflammation in her knees. It just seems like her, her serve her lift on her serve declines as the match goes on. And depending on how, you know, you are with injuries, if you have an injury prone pass, you know, inflammation can can start up on your knee. And I, I think she has it. I could be wrong. I'm not 100 percent certain, but it certainly looks like it watching her play. So I think Ludmilla, she is a threat to win this tournament. I mean, I think Ludmilla can beat anyone in this tournament in, in a single match. Right. Uh, for her to win this tournament, I think Ludmilla's the forehand is going to have to be there. I think sometimes when she plays her stronger opponents like Yelena's, the Madison Keys, she gets in trouble. Be the Donna Vekic, right? We saw Donna destroy her at the Australian Open. She gets in trouble because she tries to match that power. Where, in my opinion, Ludmilla's game is a it's a fine mix. It's a balance of power and finesse. The drop shot you saw her destroy Rabakina with that drop shot. Uh, if her drop shot's on in this tournament, I think she can go deep in this tournament. I think she can certainly get out of her draw and get into the semifinal. What do you guys think? That seeds one through four. Stay tuned for the next video. But first, I'm going to give you a prediction here. Madison Keys. That's right. Her first round matchup against Beatrice Haddad. Let's take a look at it. Beatrice Haddad and Madison Keys. They've never played before. We have the world's ranked 19th in Beatrice, who's been doing great lately, right? A couple great seasons back to back. Congratulations for her. Taking on Madison Keys, the American, who has just found her mojo. Now, Beatrice a dad, she's a lefty, I think, in my opinion, of all the top 20 players. I think she's got probably one of the better games about a foot inside the baseline. Right. She is she's a baseline bully. You never really like to see her give up the, the baseline. I think she plays well coming forward. She's got a good mid range game, uh, but she's got to serve well. Uh, she makes a lot of faults. And Beecher's dad is the type of player that if you pin her deep behind the baseline, she's not really a threat to you. Right. You can beat her if you get her behind the baseline because she plays your best tennis about a foot inside the baseline. And this is where. Madison Keys, in my opinion, is going to present problems to someone like Beatrice Haddad. Now, I must tell you, a lot of people have uh, have backed Beatrice in this match. Uh, I do think the first set goes over eight and a half. Uh, I think that's a pick. And I think Madison will probably squeak out the first set. I think it's going to be a tight first set. But uh, I think Madison can win the first set. Um, but this is a type of match where you don't want to count Beatrice out because uh, Beatrice has a good mid-range game and it's going to present problems if Madison Keys can't play the lines. Madison wants to play the lines. She wants to stretch the court. Uh, she wants to use her angled forehand. I do think both of these ladies prefer their forehand and it's going to come down to who can establish the power behind that forehand. I think Madison Keys is the stronger opponent with the forehand. However, I think Beatrice is more accurate with her forehand. So it's going to be a class of styles. Can Madison play the lines? Can she get behind the line with the forehand? Can Beatrice keep Madison contained inside the baseline? That's what it's going to come down to. But I like the first set over eight and a half. And I think Madison Keys will win the first set. Those are the picks there, guys. Enjoy. 
like the video, stay tuned for video two and three as we break down the second and third half of the draw.